Good morning, love of Christ. Hey, my name is Caleb Lyle Kunze, and I have the privilege and honor of being the youth dude or the youth director here at Love of Christ. And we just want to say, welcome to church. We truly love that you are here with us this morning. Uh, thank you for being in the building and making your way here to us this morning. It's awesome to see your faces in person. Uh, welcome to our online guests and family. We see you. We love you as well. Thank Thank you for joining us. And then a special welcome to any first time guests or visitors. We love that you are here and we don't want anything from you. We only want something for you. We hope that you are experiencing God's love, that you feel a place of belonging, and that you feel encouraged this morning. That is what we want for you is the love of God so that you can feel known, noticed, and loved. That's our hope. That's our prayer for you this morning. And our heart is that you know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, which we're going to talk a little bit about this morning, and then to leave this place and go and make a difference in the world. And there's a team of people here at Love of Christ that truly are making a huge difference. And me being the youth director, um, I want to just take a moment to honor our Ignite champions. We have over 20 adults who show up every Wednesday to love on our students students, 5th through 12th grade. We have 10 fantastic, amazing student leaders who come outside of uh, Wednesday nights, and they work on their leadership, and they show up on Wednesdays to serve and to be there for other students. God is truly blessing our youth ministry on Wednesday nights. And this morning, we kind of gave a challenge to have a little bit of a youth section this morning. So we got some students and leaders and people in this area, and we see, I see students all throughout the building as well. Um, but we're excited. And I've realized there's probably many of you who don't quite maybe know what actually happens on a Wednesday night. What happens at Ignite? And one of our amazing champions, his name is William McKeever. He was one of our students, graduated, has come back to serve, and is on the drums this morning. And he's back in the tech booth because he is our tech champion. He literally leads our tech team. And William created a countdown timer that I think gives a kind of a cool broad recap of what Ignite is all about. So I wanted to show you this video. It's just under two minutes, so you get a feel of what happens at Ignite. Check out this video. they caught me in that last one. I was real nervous, let me tell you. Yeah. 
Thank you, William, because that video, we, we watch that every kind of night leading into our evening of Ignite, and it's just fun. Uh, we have a lot of really passionate people on fire for Jesus, and we're Im- making a huge impact in our community. So thank you to all the champions, student leaders, students that are here this morning. Um, we love you and are thankful you're here. We got a lot to get to this morning, so if you could please bow your heads and pray with me, that would be awesome. Dear Jesus, we surrender this time. We ask that you be present. We ask that you just show up, God, and help open our hearts, open our ears, open our minds to hear what you have for us, Lord, as we're talking about men and women and some of the differences and some of the similarities that we have as we talk about some relationship misconceptions that the culture, that our world puts out there and the truth that your word states. So we surrender this time and we ask that you be present. We love you, Jesus. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Pastor Mark last week kicked us off with an amazing message on this series called Relation Slips and some of the misconceptions that we have. And he talked about how our contentment is found only in Jesus. Not in a relationship with someone or something, but only in Jesus. If you missed it last week, go to our Facebook page and check it out because it was really an awesome, challenging, but encouraging message for all relationships. This morning, we are going to continue this series on relation slips, and we're going to be looking at two kind of cultural misconceptions that our world has kind of adopted as being normal, and they're becoming more and more normal, I would say, and these are the two relationship misconceptions. Men and women are created for hierarchy. Who's more important? Who has more value? Who has more worth? compared to the other person. And the other one is that men and women are created as molds. We're we're the same thing. We're cut from the same cloth, in a sense. That we're identical. There's nothing that differentiates us. And we're going to look at how Scripture talks to each of these different misconceptions. And we're going to look at scripture and see what God has to say about men and women, male and females, and their similarities and differences. Now, to be clear... We are talking kind of specifically about marriage relationships between a man and a woman, but I believe that these concepts are also true for all relationships, and they kind of boil over to all relationships, maybe with your kids, or maybe with your parents, maybe with your friends, maybe with your employer, or your employee, or maybe even two church members or people sitting in down the pew from you or down the seat or the row. These concepts can boil over into all relationships that we have in our life. So no matter where you're at, if you're not married this morning, that's okay because I believe that God has something in store for you to hear and something to learn and something to apply into your life that I hope and pray will help you to leave and then go and make a difference in your relationships. So the first one that we're going to be talking about into a little bit of depth is men and women are created for hierarchy. This is a belief that we're seeing more and more of because I am a man, I'm more valuable. Because I am a man, I have more worth. Because I am a man, I should have more, I have more entitlement because I'm a man. And on the flip side of that, there's also a movement by the ladies that are saying, because, because I am a woman, I should be more valuable. I am more valuable. I am more worthy and I should have more entitlement than a man does. And not simply men and women, but this happens in all different aspects and ways. People from different backgrounds, people with different skin colors or professions, people of different ages or different experiences, all are saying, I've been created for a hierarchy. I'm supposed to have the most wealth, the most uh, value compared to every other person. And because I have this skin color, because I have this high paying job, because I am of this age and I'm more mature than those young rapscallions, or because I'm younger, I'm not like one of those old people, we think that we have more value and more worth. And we try to fight to see how high up this chain of command, how high up the hierarchy we can get. And we won't settle until we're at the top. And it's a constant battle. 
because I am X, Y, or Z, I am more important. Or because you are X, Y, or Z, you are less important than I am. And we're willing to go do whatever, go to any length to try and step on people so that we can move up the chain of command in society to be better than someone else. And instead of looking at someone's opinions or Caleb saying, well, this is what I think, I thought it'd be good for us to look at scripture, to look at God's word and see what does God have to say about this idea of hierarchy? And here's what he says in Genesis chapter one. So rewind all the way back to the beginning of scripture, the very first book of the Bible, Genesis, the very first chapter of the Bible in Genesis chapter one, verse 27. God says this. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. You see, if you are a human being, You have been created in the image of God. You have been created in the image of the God of the universe. And because I have been created in the image of God, because my spouse, Carissa, has been created in the image of God, because our son, Nakoa, has been created in the image of God, because Jeff Bezos, the, the CEO of Amazon, has been created in the image of God, and just like the, the homeless person on the side of the street is created in the image of God, it really helps balance the playing field that there actually really isn't a hierarchy between humanity from God's perspective. You and I have equal value in the sight of God. He has created us in his image. You're not more than or less than because of these different circumstances in your life. You are created in the image of God. You bear with you the image of the God of the universe. Proverbs 22, 2 says, rich and poor have this in common. The Lord is maker of them both. Romans chapter 2, verse 11, for God, is, for God does not show favoritism. God don't play favorites. Well, God just, he must really love that person way more. Look how much money they have. Look how nice of a car they have. Look at the sweet boat that they have or the equipment that they get to go fishing with. Like, God don't play favorites. In Galatians chapter three, we see the writer Paul, as he's writing to the church in Galatia, he says this, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there's neither male and female, for you are all one in Jesus. We are one, we are equal in value, we are equal in worth, there's no hierarchy of who's better or who's worse. We are all equal because of Jesus, because of his death and his resurrection, because of his love for you. You have equal status with the person next to you, with your spouse, with the person who's older than you and the person who's younger than you, the people with the different background and different experiences. The relation slip is that men and women are created for hierarchy and here is the truth. Men and women are created for harmony, not hierarchy. Men and women are created for harmony, not hierarchy. We're created to be in unison together, to complement each other so that we can make a beautiful song. I love that my wife is an amazing singer and she's fantastic and she just blows me away every time she sings. But what's really amazing and what really accentuates it, what really makes it sound even better, is like when someone like Stefani, which isn't her real name actually, sorry, Stephanie. I call her Stefani, it's a long story. When Stefani harmonizes with her, it like takes it from amazing, awesome to like, wow. That is next level because when we harmonize, when we come together to complement each other, not to fight over each other, who's going to be the leader, who's going to, but when we can harmonize, man, it's beautiful. 
And I believe that has how God has created man and woman, husband and wife, our relationships is not to see how we can get ahead of that person, but how can we harmonize? How can we complement them and encourage them? We have been created equal and worthy in the sight of God to bless each other and bring beauty and harmony to each other. The second relation slip is that men and women are created as molds. Not like the fungus mold, but like the mold of if you're going to make copies of a whole bunch of things, right? You create a mold, and then you pour whatever substance in there, and it takes the shape of the mold, and you can make a whole bunch of exactly identical things. The thought is, I think the belief that the world is kind of leaning towards is that men and women, we're all just the same. It don't matter You're just the same exact person as me. We're just the same. Nothing differentiates us. You are you and I am me, and we're the same people. We're identical to each other. There's nothing that separates us or gives us value outside of the fact that we're just the same person. And this relation slip can cause a lot of stress and challenges in our relationships with one another. Because if we view our spouse as being the exact same as me, if we view our friends as being the exact same as me, if I try to be the exact same person as my boss or as my best friend or that famous person, we lose sight of the beauty that God has created us special. We lose the sight that God has created us with purpose We lose the sight that God has created us unique and different from every other person on the planet. There will never be another Caleb Lau Kinsey. Yes, the one and only. Past, present, and future. There's only one you. There's only one you. And I meant to bring an apple and an orange to kind of give an example. I forgot them at home. Well, actually, we don't have oranges at home, so I was going to bring an apple and a pomegranate with you and say, it's like apples and pomegranates. They're kind of the same. Just imagine I'm holding an apple and a pomegranate because I forgot them, so I apologize. Imagine I'm holding an apple and a pomegranate. You could say, well, they're roughly the same size. Roughly. They're roughly the same shape, circular-ish. They're roughly, you could even like push it a little bit. They're even roughly in the same color spectrum. Reddish, purplish. I I don't even know what color a pomegranate is, but they're kind of the same. And yet, if you try to eat a pomegranate like you do an apple, you're in for rude awakening. I ate my first pomegranate ever in my life this last year, 2023. Krista brought home pomegranates. I was like, what the heck is this? He's like, you open it up and you eat it. I was like, how? So we like cut it open and my mind was blown that there's all these little like juicy filled seeds. I was like, oh my goodness. So you don't eat the skin? No, you don't eat the skin, right? Like my mind was blown because they are completely different things. You never say an apple and a pomegranate are the same. They're from the same mold. No, they're very different and that's a good thing. Psalm 139, verse 13, the writer says this, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. You have been fearfully and wonderfully made. Pastor Mark, our vacancy pastor, loves to say this. You are a unique, unrepeatable miracle of God. You and I'm talking to everybody, you are a unique, unrepeatable miracle of God, and that is a good thing. Men and women are different. Apples and pomegranates. Little boys and little girls are different. Praise the Lord. You and I are different, and you're thinking, praise the Lord, because that'd be too much for me to handle. We are different We're not of the same mold. We're created in the image of God. We have equal value before him, but we are different. 
Here's what Paul writes to the church in Ephesus, specifically talking about men and women in a marriage relationship and the differences that are there. It says this in verse 21. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So this is talking to men and women, husbands and wives, and this is key because it's saying men and women, husbands and wives, you need to submit to each other. You need to sacrifice and lay down your rights for the other person. Verse 22, wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the savior. Men, you are called to lead your wife. Are you doing that well? Are you leading your family as Jesus leads his church? Verse 24, now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Ladies, are you supporting your husbands? Are you following his lead as he follows after Jesus, as the church follows after Jesus? Verse 25, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Men, are you loving your wife the same way that Jesus loves his church? Are you going to the same lengths to love your spouse like Jesus did by suffering, by going through pain, by dying for his church? Are you doing that on a consistent basis for your wife? Laying down your wants and desires for her? Verse 26, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. And this is where he wraps up kind of this section a couple verses later, verse 33. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. He wraps up this section with respect and love. Men are called to love their wife. Wives are called to respect their husbands. And to give a little example of this, I, we have been doing a bathroom remodel at our house, okay? And Caleb is the general contractor. I'm doing it all, okay? And if you know anything about Caleb, I am not a general contractor. I'm not Bob the Builder. Can I fix it? Probably not, but I can YouTube it, okay? Or I can have Krista YouTube it and be like, okay, what is they, how do I do this? And in this process, Carissa has been so gracious she has been so encouraging. She has been so respectful and appreciative of me of doing the work, trying to learn it, and it's not up to professional standards. I'll do something and she'll come in and be like, babe, how does it look? And I know she sees where I made a mistake. She's like, it looks awesome. You're doing great. And she encourages me and she respects me and appreciates the work that I'm doing for our family. And on the flip side of that, there was one evening where we were to the uh, mudding and taping and sanding part of the drywall, which if you've ever done that, that job is like the worst, okay? Just dust everywhere, it's gross, it's nasty. And one night, after we had been doing it for a while, we were on the next wave of sanding, and Chris was like, can I not sand tonight? I just don't want to have to shower for the 12th day in a row because I'm just covered head to toe with dust and it's just gross. Like, can I not? And I, in that moment, could have said, no, we have to do this together. We said we're doing this together. So here we go. But instead, and this is a super simple, so I'm not trying to like talk myself up. I, I sacrificed, I would say, and I went into the bathroom, I closed the door, I sealed it all off, and I went to town on sanding everything. And I came out looking like the abominable snowman just covered head to toe in white dust. And in that moment, I think I was able to love Carissa and be able to do something for her that she really didn't want to do. 
love and respect. And I tell you what, that bathroom remodel has gone so well from the standpoint of she respects me and encourages me and I get to love her and do some things that she doesn't really want to do. And it's been a really beautiful thing in our household. And it's almost done. Woohoo! praise the Lord. Um, love and respect. Love and respect. God has made man and woman, husband and wife differently and that is good. This does not mean that a man is more than or less than. It doesn't mean that a woman is more than or less than. It doesn't mean someone from a different age category is more than or less, like, we're just different. We're not of the same mold, we're different. And we need to fight back the relation slip that we are all identical and that women need to be exactly like a man in order to be successful. And that a man needs to have the characteristics of a woman in order to be seen as successful. No, let's celebrate our differences like the body of Christ. Each person is a member of the body of Christ and each member, fingers and toes and eyes and ears and hearts and lungs, it all has a different function. So it is with you and I. We're different. Apples and pomegranates. There's a scene from The Incredibles that I think is really fascinating. It's towards the end of the movie, and Syndrome, who is kind of the evil character, has captured the incredible family, and Syndrome has created, because he doesn't have superpowers, but he's created these inventions to make him like a superhero. He can fly, and he's got these cool weapons, and he says this line. Okay, you can read it. And when everyone's super, no one will be. His goal was to sell his invention so that everybody could fly, so that everybody had these awesome weapons, so that everybody was the exact same. They were identical. They were all cut from the same mold, that they were identical to each other. Because when everyone's identical to each other, nobody's special, was his thought. But the truth of the fact is that men and women were not created for or not created as a mold. Men and women are created as masterpieces, not molds. You and I are created as a masterpiece. Not identical. We're different. Ephesians chapter 2 helps explain why this all matters. Why am I talking about a hierarchy? Why am I talking about mold? Like, this doesn't even make sense. Here's why this is important. Ephesians chapter two, verse 10. For we are God's handiwork, for we are God's, another way to say it is workmanship, or another way to say it is we are God's masterpiece created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We have been created unique. We've been created special. We have been created with glorious purpose that God has already planned out for us. You and I have a purpose, and it's different than every other person on the planet. You're different than I am. We're created with purpose. But with our own works, with our own desires, with, we try to make ourselves try to be identical to other people. I want to be like that person, and then I'll be successful. Or if, if my kid looks exactly like me and has a life like me, then they'll be successful, because we try to make everyone identical. And the problem is we allow our own selfishness to get in the way of God's purpose for our lives in the first place. Created with purpose. You and I have all been in a relation slip with God our Father. Our selfishness has gotten in the way. It's caused a wedge to be driven between us and between our Father. Romans chapter three, verse 23 says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All people, everybody has fallen short. Everybody has missed the mark. Everybody has not been perfect like God asks us to be. We've all sinned. 
We're all in the same spot. We're all at the same playing field. We're all sinners. But Jesus doesn't leave us there. He took action. And he asks us to confess. He says to repent, which is a 180 degree turn from our sin and to turn back to our father because he doesn't want to leave us in this relation slip. He wants to be in a relationship with us that's restored, that's renewed, that's been redeemed and bought back. And he says, I want you to confess. Bring your burdens to me. All, you are hev- all of you who are weary and heavy laden, Come to me, and I will give you rest. So we're going to do that now. We're going to confess. We're going to repent. And I want you to reflect on, before we get there, where have you gone astray? Where have you allowed relationships, misconceptions into your life? Where have you wandered from the path that God has laid out for you? Where have you selfishly tried to do it your own way? instead of God's. So let's confess together. And I ask that you repeat after me this prayer of confession. Repeat after me. God, thanks for your love. I don't deserve it. I can't earn it. In Jesus' name, I boldly ask, forgive me, fill me, renew me. In Jesus' name, amen. And God says that you are forgiven. If you confess your sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive you your sins. You are forgiven. You have been made new. It's a beautiful thing. It's an amazing thing. Jesus says in John chapter 1, verse 12, or John says, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Receive plus believe equals become children of God. Relation slips can sneak into our marriage. Relation slips can sneak into our families, into our friendships, into our workplaces. But men and women have been created for harmony, equal and worthy in the sight of God. Men and women have been created as masterpieces, unique, unrepeatable miracles of God created with glorious purpose. As we wrap up this morning, here's my call to action. Not just to learn something, not just to hear something in our minds, but to then go and live it out. Think about this question. Which relationship do you need to focus on today? And where have you lost your purpose in that relationship? Maybe it's with your child. You've been trying to make them feel like they need to look exactly like you. But maybe your purpose is to encourage them to pursue what God has put on their heart. Maybe you have thought that you're better than other employees because they're lazy, good-for-nothing bums. But maybe your purpose is to set an example of how to be a hard worker. Maybe you've been frustrated with a friend who's been a joy sap in your life because of the situation they're at in life. Maybe your purpose is to love and support them during this hard season of life. Maybe you've not been loving your wife like you should. Maybe your purpose is to swallow your pride, put your big boy pants on, and ask for forgiveness. Maybe you haven't been respecting your husband like you should. Maybe your purpose is to sacrifice some of your desires and appreciate him for who he is and what he does. Whatever the relationship, whoever it might be, I want you to think and pray about what is God calling you to do? What is your purpose that he's asked you to do, that he's laid out for you, that he's created in advance for you to do? How can you move from a relation slip back into a relationship? Because you are a unique, unrepeatable miracle of God. And you have been created with glorious purpose. Live into what God is calling you to do today. Because the relationships with people that God has given in your life, it's too important not to. Can you pray with me? Dear Jesus, 
We surrender our relationships to you. We ask that you fill us up with your love and your forgiveness, with your patience. We ask that you help us to live like you, Jesus, to sacrifice, to love, to support. Help us to remember that we have been created for harmony and that we have been created as masterpieces. Help us to go and live a changed life today. In Jesus' name, amen.